Welcome to our video on the advantages of learning what's possible with SharePoint, SharePoint libraries, metadata, and custom list views. If you're someone who relies on Office, OneDrive, Teams, and SharePoint on a daily basis, but feels like you could be getting more out of it, or if you're a seasoned user who thinks they already know everything there is to know about SharePoint, then this video is for you. In the next few minutes, we'll show you how easy it is to implement SharePoint features that can dramatically simplify document handling processes, reduce frustration, increase productivity, and make your whole team more empowered and successful. So sit back, relax, and in just a few minutes, you'll see how simple it is to create powerful, effective SharePoint intranets. First, we need to understand why SharePoint and intranets even exist. When Microsoft Office was released back in 1990, companies quickly began generating an excessive number of documents that needed to be managed. Initially, most companies approached managing those documents by implementing shared network drives and giving each department its own folder on that drive. However, this provided only a partial solution as files were being accidentally overwritten and becoming increasingly difficult to find. With each department having its own folder and lots of subfolders, searching for documents across departments also became cumbersome. These limitations led Microsoft to release SharePoint in 2003, a powerful tool for document management. SharePoint's strategy was to give each department, instead of a folder on a shared drive, a small private team website on the company's network, a website that contained a document library a library with features that would address all of the problems associated with using folders on shared drives. These departmental SharePoint team sites were arranged in a structure that mimicked the organization's management structure and the structure of the folders on the shared drives. The structure was given a top site that would act as the entry point, provide navigation to all the department sites, and also deliver some valuable information to all employees. This is how intranets were originally structured. Suddenly, instead of going to a folder on a shared drive to work with their documents, members went to their new department intranet site and into that site's document library. While these team sites also supported features to assist the team in their day-to-day -day tasks, like a shared team calendar that they could all link their Outlook calendars to, an announcements list that eliminated the need to do broadcast email, and a shared team task management list. It was the document libraries and how they addressed all of the problems of shared drives that was responsible for SharePoint suddenly becoming the most popular product in Microsoft's history. So what was so great about SharePoint document libraries? Well, versioning, collaboration, custom metadata, and list views. One of the most valuable features of a SharePoint library is called versioning. Simply put, this means that each time a document is opened and edited and saved, a new version is created. Basically, when you see a document in a SharePoint document library, you're looking at the most recent version of that document sitting on top of a stack of all of the previous versions. Documents in SharePoint libraries, when clicked on and opened, will always show you the most recent version. However, each document gives you the capability of selecting it and looking at its version history, every previous version of the document, where you're given the choice of just reviewing it or even restoring it as the most current version. The versioning feature guaranteed that important documents or even important portions of older documents are never lost. You can even go back into an old version of a document and just grab a paragraph out of it. The benefits of versioning also motivated people using the documents to leave them in the library where they were protected rather than downloading them onto their own desktop. By going to the library, opening a document there, editing it there, and saving it there when they're done, ensures that everyone is always seeing the latest version of every document. Microsoft actually coined a phrase for this concept, which was one version of the truth. The benefit of knowing that you were looking at the latest version of any document was significant. Collaboration support was another revolutionary new feature. 
With shared drives, a constant concern was the possibility of two people editing the same document at the same time and valuable modifications being accidentally overwritten. SharePoint libraries supported a function called Document Checkout. This feature, when activated, would only allow one person at a time to edit a document. It would still allow everyone else to read the document, but only one editor at a time. When the current editor was through, they would simply check in the document, which would then allow any other authorized member to check it out themselves. This capability vastly improved the integrity of the stored documents. It's important to point out that modern SharePoint libraries have evolved the document collaboration capabilities even further, allowing the simultaneous editing of a document by multiple individuals without risk of damage to the document. Today, simultaneous editing of Microsoft Word documents even displays the names and cursor locations of concurrent contributors using unique colors for each contributor. Another remarkable advancement of SharePoint libraries over shared drives was the ability to apply custom tags or labels, often called metadata, to documents. Historically, in a shared drive folder environment, the only way you could find a specific document would be to go to a top-level department folder, open it, read the names of the subfolders, open one of them, and maybe a few subfolders later, start reading file names, hoping to find the file you were looking for by recognizing something in its file name. Even then, all too often, you were forced to open the document and start reading it to know if it was truly the right one. The more documents you have, and the more folders you need to look in, the more frustrating this becomes. It can actually reach a point when it takes so long to find a document that it's faster to just recreate it. So where document versioning and document checkout protect the integrity and the history of documents in SharePoint libraries, the ability to add custom tags or metadata to individual documents dramatically increases the capability to instantly find any specific document or a group of related documents, regardless of where they are in the internet. In fact, you don't go looking for the document. SharePoint Search does, and it will instantly offer it to you unless you don't have permission to view it. In order to explain this, we're going to need to touch on the concept of metadata. Even if you've never heard of the word metadata, odds are you've been using it for years. Here we are in a fictitious shared drive situation using Windows File Explorer. I'm going to enter the Accounting Department folder. And from there, I'm going to enter Financial Forms. Here we can see that the first column of information indicates the file type, and we can see Excel files, Word documents, and so on. The next column indicates the name of the file. We also see that we have a column for the date the document was last modified, the type of document again, and even the size of the document. These columns are called metadata, and we're all quite familiar with them. What many people don't realize is that this is only some of the metadata associated with these files. If we right-click in the header bar for this list view, we can see that there are other metadata columns that we could choose to display. If we right-click on the document and select its properties from the drop-down, and then click the Details tab, we'll see that we can even update many of these hidden metadata values. Unfortunately, this metadata is mostly hidden, inconvenient to edit, and not very useful in helping you find specific documents. SharePoint, on the other hand, makes it easy to create and fill out custom metadata columns in your libraries columns that you can use to indicate additional information about each document, making them much easier to find and manage. Let's take a look at how this works and what it can do for you. First, we're going to go to a modern SharePoint site. This is a fictitious cookie company called LSG Cookies. As you can see, this intranet has a top site with news and announcements for the entire organization. We're going to use the top navigation to visit their accounting site. Here in the accounting site, we can see that this also consists of a stereotypical department site with accounting announcements, an accounting calendar, etc. Access to their libraries is over here. 
To begin to demonstrate the power of metadata, let's take a scenario where we have a folder on the share drive for the accounting department. In that folder are four subfolders that each contain a bunch of documents. We're interested in moving those documents into a new SharePoint library in our SharePoint department site and then enhancing that library with some metadata. First, we're going to create a brand new library. We're going to call it Accounting Documents. We're going to give it a description of important accounting documents from the old shared drive. Then we just click on Create. And now we're delivered to our new document library. As we can see, our library is empty. We can also see that it is already displaying four columns of metadata. The file type, the name of the file, when it was last modified, and who modified it. You can also see that it's dying to let us add new columns of metadata, which we'll do in a moment. First, we're going to show you just how easy it is to get files from our shared drive folder into our new library. Let's bring in Windows File Explorer. Here we can see in the accounting folder on the shared drive, there are four subfolders containing documents. All I need to do to bring these documents into my new SharePoint library and begin using all of its features is to just drag them from the Windows File Explorer and drop them in our new library. And now here they are in my new SharePoint library. So far, we've recreated pretty much what we had in the folder on the shared drive. But if we open the first folder, you can already see that I've got some metadata. I've got the file type with a little icon that indicates that these are Word documents. I've got the file name. I've got when it was last modified. And I've got the name of the person who modified the file. One of the issues that I face in having brought these documents in this way is that I have to open each of these folders in order to see what's in it. I'm interested in saving time in the future by making that unnecessary, but I need to retain what category each of these documents is in. I would also like to save time in the future by being able to indicate the status of each of these documents. And by status, I mean if it's a new draft, if it's been approved, is it obsolete, should it be archived? I'm going to apply some simple metadata to address these two issues. The first thing I'm going to do is to create a metadata column called Category, and I'm going to populate it with the choices that represent the names of the folders these documents are stored in. So I'm going to create a new metadata column for my library called Category, and I'm going to give it the choices that I can use as I import files or create new ones. All I need to do is to click on the Add Column header and select Choice. Choice will allow me to input several selections that I can choose from when documents are added to this library. Since I know what my categories are going to be from the folder names on my shared drive, I'm going to add the choices for banking, credit, forms, and statements. Now I have my new metadata column, but as you can see, it's empty. I'm going to drag it a little bit to the left to make it a little more convenient. Now for this first group of files, I want to populate that field with the word banking. I just open the banking folder. And now I could give each one of these documents the value of banking as its category by selecting the document and editing the details of the document. But there's a much easier way. SharePoint document libraries are better than using Windows File Explorer in that you can work with documents in a view that is similar to that of using Excel. I just go up to the ribbon, click on Edit in Grid View, and I can easily select and even drag down values to update other documents. Now I'll do that with the contents of each of the folders.
Now that I've done that, all of my documents are tagged with the appropriate category. I can now save a lot of time working with this library by turning off the folders so that I no longer have to look in each one separately to see my documents. To do that, I need to alter what is called this library's current view. In a moment, we're going to discuss how you create document views. But for now, let's just modify this view and show the first benefit of using a SharePoint library to hold these documents. I'm just going to go up to where the name of our current view is displayed, click on the dropdown, and select Edit This View. This takes me to a page that gives me all of the controls for the view of the library that we're using. You see at the top the metadata fields that are being displayed, indicated by a check mark. Down at the bottom of this list, there is an option to show all of the files regardless of the folders that they are in. I'm going to choose that option and hit Save. Now I can see all of my documents without them being obscured by folders, yet I can still see exactly what category each document is in. Once more, I can sort all of the documents in this library on their category, or filter this view to show me only the categories that I want to see. Now let's add another metadata column to help us understand where each of these documents is in its own life cycle. We're going to add another choice column, and we're going to call this one status. We're going to put in some stereotypical document status choices. Draft, in progress, pending review, rejected, approved, published, obsolete, and archived. When I save this new column, I can now use it as my team works with these documents to indicate the status of each document. After a period of time, this status column is going to allow me to make some new custom list views that are going to save me a lot of time. I could make a view for the obsolete files that should be archived. I can create a view for all of the documents that currently have a status of rejected. I know they need to be worked on. And I can take this list view of the documents that require work and place it on the home page of the accounting site to help facilitate the effort to fix them. The possibilities are endless. Beyond the benefits of a more manageable library or the ability to create custom views, all of this metadata dramatically helps the Internet's built-in search function. Search can use this additional metadata associated with each file to help provide very accurate search results. And once on the search results page, 
the metadata is again available to help refine those results even further. After discussing the advantages of SharePoint libraries over shared drives, let's revisit the benefits of a SharePoint intranet and how a collection of department sites can greatly benefit the entire organization. Beyond the libraries, SharePoint department sites provide the perfect vehicle to coordinate the efforts of team members working remotely. Shared calendars, departmental announcements, task lists, and document collaboration provide the means by which a team can continue to work together effectively. SharePoint departmental team sites have become today's digital office. Just as the capabilities of SharePoint libraries have improved over time, so have the department sites that contain them. While there is still a top site serving as the entry point for all employees, there are now various department site templates designed for specific tasks and equipped with even more flexible document libraries. Furthermore, a diverse range of new functionalities from process automation applications to business intelligence dashboards have been added functionalities that are designed to be configured by the end user without assistance from IT. Just as significant, Microsoft has recently created a centralized function called Purview, where organizations can create document management rules that can pertain to every library in the intranet. Rules that can automatically ensure the overall document management implementation is legally compliant including retention rules that can turn a library into a self-cleaning oven with an automatically generated audit report for what was done and why. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. We hope that it provides valuable insights that can help managers and staff save time, reduce stress, and boost efficiency. If you could share it with those who would benefit, we would greatly appreciate your support.